and welcome to the Northern Soul Sisters YouTube channel. Welcome to our vlog today. My name is Ruan and you will notice that I am sat here on my Todd. <laughs> my girls out with me. I would much prefer to be filming this with them. However, we have been talking about lots of content that we'd like to bring you guys. And unfortunately, there's only so much time that we have together when we see each other. So there is going to be the odd video where we actually film separately and then the gorgeous Rachel will be editing it all together for you. So this is one of them. So it does feel very strange, I must admit, but I'm going to hand you over when I'm finished here over to the girls so that they can talk through um, what they want to talk through as well. So my name's Rowan for anybody who doesn't know and I do have my own um, YouTube channel which is the Yorkshire Sew Girl and the reason I mention that in this vlog is because we're going to be talking blouses. So we have decided we're going to enter into the Sew April Blouse 23 challenge which is actually hosted by the gorgeous Gabrielle from The Cloth Edit in Australia and it's co-hosted by none other than moi. <laughs> So I'm helping Gabrielle with the challenge, not quite as much as, I'm not doing as much work as she's done, put it that way. I'm just supporting her really. So I'm just the co-host of the um, challenge. And Gabrielle asked if the Northern Soul Sisters would like to get involved. And we said, yes, of course, we would absolutely love to. We all love a good blouse. So we decided we were going to join in the challenge. I will talk through a little bit about this and hopefully Rachel will put some visuals up for you as well. Um, I do have a vlog that's specifically on this um, challenge if you want more details as well. And so does Gabrielle from The Cloth Edit. So we will try and put the details of that in the description box below for you to go and refer to if need be. Because I will be whizzing through this, otherwise you'll be here forever. <laughs> so So April Blouse 23 is a challenge for the month of April. So from the 1st to the 30th. And it's all about making, you guessed it, <laughs> blouses. Um, so... You, there is no reveal date. You can actually post your blouses at any day of the month as long as it's done before the end of play on the 30th of April, no matter where you are, because it is actually an international challenge as well. So you can sew up any pattern you like. You can sew up a big four pattern. You can sew up an indie pattern. You can hack a pattern. You can draft your own pattern. Whatever you want, basically, you can do as long as it's a blouse. So all you have to do when you are entering into the challenge is pop a picture of your make on Instagram. Follow both myself, Gabrielle, at The Cloth Edit and myself at The Yorkshire Sew Girl. Tag us both in and use the hashtag SewAprilBlouse23. Simple as that. Now, I think quite a lot of us like a good blouse. We all like a good blouse, don't we? So I'm hoping there's going to be quite a lot of people entering into this challenge and there is no pressure of a reveal date or anything like that. So you can just get cracking whenever you like. So Gabrielle very kindly offered the three of us some fabric. Um, and we were allowed to go and choose something from her website and all the way from Australia. I still think it's fascinating that we can be doing something like this with someone who is basically stood upside down right now and probably asleep. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, she said to us that we could um, pick some fabric from her website to make a blouse this month. So I already knew what blouse I wanted to make, which was a good sign. Um, I do like a good blouse and there'll be more um, vlogs coming out over the month over on my own channel talking about blouses. But I had an idea of what I wanted to make and it's a pattern that I've wanted to make for quite some time and that is the Fibre Mood blouse, the Norma. So this is a really popular pattern, particularly on Instagram. If you go and have a look at the um, hashtag there is a lot of people that have made this pattern and I've heard really, really good reports. I do love a fibre mood pattern, I have to be honest. Although I wasn't very keen on the latest blouse pattern that I made by them, which was the honey blouse. Not that I didn't like the blouse, the instructions were debatable, put it that way. But I've heard lots of good reports about the normal blouse, so that's what I'm going to be making. Now, I've, I've even written out some of the neat details on it. I thought I'd be really professional for this uh, vlog. So just so you know, I'm just going to read from my notes. <laughs> so basically what it says about the Norma blouse is um, sleeves that stand out are in. I've got quite big sleeves on today, actually. This is the Remy Raglan, by the way, by uh, Sew House 7. And Norma knows that being big can be better. The lavish three-quarter length balloon sleeves are full at the shoulders, have puffed wrists and gathered seams. The original short v-neck blouse effortlessly steals the show when paired with a high-waisted skirt, jeans or trousers. Ooh. 
So what is involved in this um, blouse is it's basically a v-neck blouse with a button placket along the front and big sleeves. And I love that idea. Now, I tend to always go for higher neck um, necklines. But the normos really appealed to me because I seem to be drifting more towards V-neck things at the moment. I quite like that because you can wear necklaces and things. I always struggle when I've got a high neck um, top on. So that is the um, pattern that I'm going to be making and I'm really excited about it. Now, if, as well, if you go on and search on Instagram, Norma Blouse Hack, loads of people have done all sorts of different things with it. Changed the neckline, changed the length, the sleeves, made it into a dress. So there's loads and loads of options with this pattern as well, which I'm really excited about. And the other good thing about it is actually you don't need that much to make it. You need four buttons for the front of it, your fabric, some thread and some interfacing. We like it, don't we? So I've already got mine printed out, actually. I need to dig it out, really, and work through the sizing and decide what size I'm going to make. So just for reference, it goes from a size 4 to 30 UK sizes, which is a bust of 30 inches to 55, a waist of 26 to 50 inches, and hips of 34 to 55 inches. So um, a relatively good um, size bracket, and there's quite a lot of ease in this pattern as well. Now, it did say that it was designed to tuck into high-waisted jeans, etc. Now, I've got a bit of a mum tum, so I'm not liking that look on me right now. So I'm wondering whether I might actually do something with this to increase the width on the hips. So I might be kind of changing the pattern slightly to skim out so that I can wear it untucked. That's the idea, because actually, if you look at the pattern, it's quite boxy. So the measurements for the um, bust is very similar to that of the hips as well. So I'm going to have a look at that and potentially play around with it. But yeah, I thought you might want to know a little bit about that if you don't want to be tucking it into everything. So you only need as well around two metres of fabric for the largest size. Now, that is if it's 140 centimetres wide fabric. If it's less, um, if it's around 110 centimetres, you will need 2.35 metres. Now, fabric advice is basically all the fabrics. You can make in whatever fabric you want. So obviously, if you go for a more structured fabric, it will be more dramatic. So the sleeves will be much more pronounced, but you could also go in a nice drapey fabric because then you would just have really nice, loose, billowy sleeves. Depends on what look you're going for. Um, but I have seen quite a lot of different um, styles on Instagram with people with different fabric types. So anyway, it did say... Um, Organza blouses worn with a spaghetti strap underneath is a huge trend right now. That's what it said on the pattern. So, being the trendy person that I am, <laughs> this is the fabric that I have chosen from Cloth Edit. Look at this. Is it not beautiful? I'm very much drawn to green at the moment. Not sure why. I've never been a massive fan of it, but recently... I've got this mint green um, top on. I've made my green leopard print coat. And I saw this. I just totally fell in love with it, which is unusual for me, really. I suppose it's because it's a little bit animal print like. I mean, it isn't really animal print. But can you see how beautiful it is? And I don't know if you can see, but you can just see your hand through it. If I had the light behind me, you'd be able to kind of see. But you can actually see slightly through it. So I'm going to be that trendy person who puts a little spaghetti strap top on underneath. But how beautiful is this fabric? Now, this came beautifully packaged from Gabrielle. It came in no time at all, considering it's come from the other side of the world. Um, and it came beautifully wrapped with tissue paper inside and a beautiful note and an awesome card with loads of scraps on it as well so that you could have a look at all the other fabrics that she's got online. I don't believe there's an awful lot of this online left. However, they do it in different colours as well. So let me talk to you about my fabric. It is called 100% um, Japanese Cotton Wall Emilio Green Spot. Um, it is 140 centimetres wide, which is great, and it's 100 grams per square metre, so it is quite a light fabric. Now, on the website, it's about £7 per half metre, so £14 for a metre, which I think is pretty good value. And it does say it on there that the Emilio collection are Japanese cottons designed for Italian designers. So there's two different styles in this type of fabric in the Emilio collection. There's this, which is spots, 
it's called spots on the website and that's in green blue and black or you can get it in um a leaf print as well so it's got huge leaves all over it oh, which is amazing and that comes in the green and blue so the description online for this is the cloth is not a loose weave like some other voiles it looks a little gauzy but it has a bit more drape body and feel of organza now i think this is going to make an awesome sleeve and I know what Gabrielle's saying because it has still got quite a lot of drape, but I, it's got a little bit of structure in it as well. I've never, the reason I, I picked this one is because I've never worked with a wow before. I don't know if that's how you say it, but I like the sound of it on my tongue. Wow. Um, so I wanted to try something different because that's what I'm trying to do this year. I'm taking myself out of my comfort zone. Normally I'd go straight for viscose. Um, but I decided not to this time. But I think this is a good in between. It's got the drape, but it's also got a little bit of structure as well. I think it's going to make a beautiful Norma blouse. So when I went onto the website, I really could have <laughs> ordered about 20, 20 different fabrics. Gabrielle's got a really good eye for really unusual different fabrics. And I would see, say that they were very special fabrics. A lot of them are big florals or abstract prints. And I had about, there was five, I think, that I really couldn't decide. And I basically had to draw um, out of a hat. <laughs> that's how I made my decision. But anyway, so I think that's going to be really nice. The only thing I've got to do now is choose my buttons. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until I've made it up because it has got in it. It's, so it's on a white background and then it's got really pale, mid and dark deep deep green um spots on it and i want to wait until it's made up before i decide what color i want to go with um i did think about doing self-covered buttons but as there is a little bit of you know you can see through i know you can put like some white lining underneath it i think i'm gonna go for a button but i don't know if i want it to blend in with the pattern or stand out so watch this space what do we think? Do we think that that's going to make a good Norma blouse? Have you made the Norma blouse before? Do you have any tips? <laughs> Pop them all in the comments section below. So that's my choice. I hope you liked it. I hope you liked seeing what we're kind of going to be getting up to. I'm going to hand you now over to the lovely Tamlin and we'll see you again very soon. Take care, everybody. Bye. Hi, everyone. So can we just start off by saying how strange this feels? filming a northern solstice's video without my two ladies by my side this feels very strange but we really wanted to put this video together for you and this was the way that we could do it so we're all filming our segments separately as you can see and then popping it all together for you i've got a little friend down here so if you happen to see chester just bob his head up or his tail that's who it is so i'm tamlin one third of the northern soul sisters as you know and i'm really really excited about this video and this project so we're all going to be sewing blouses as part of Sew April Blouse, which is a challenge run by Gabrielle from The Cloth Edit and co-hosted by our very own Ruan. So Gabrielle kindly sent us some fabric for this challenge and I really loved having a look on her website and choosing the fabric that I wanted to use for my blouse. I actually had my blouse pattern in mind when I went to look on her website. I was going to talk to you about the fabric first, but I'm thinking maybe I should talk to you about the pattern, seeing as that's how I did it in my head. So, blouses are not something that I've sewn up a lot. I've made the Patina blouse by Friday Pattern Company and I've made the Anna Allen Anthea blouse. And I love both of them. The Patina is more my style, I would say. The Anthea blouse I wear now and again, but it's not like a regular feature in my wardrobe. I saw this pattern, the Lillian blouse by Sew Over It. It was one of their new releases earlier this year. I'm part of their PDF VIP club, I think it's called, so you get early access to their patterns. And something about this pattern just sang to me. And I think, to be honest, it was one of the versions that Lisa had made. And she just looked incredible in this black and white polka dot blouse tucked into high-waisted trousers. And she just looked so nice. And then a lot of the pattern insiders that were sharing their versions looked amazing too. And I bought it straight away. I actually ordered it from Sew Over It with the pattern printing as well. And that all arrived. So the pattern is a blouse. It has a lovely shawl collar. That's sort of its main feature. 
and it's got three different sleeve lengths that you can use. So it's got a short, a three quarter length or a full length sleeve with a narrow cuff. I actually haven't decided which option I'm going to go for yet. That is open to change <laughs> opinions. Do let me know if you would like to suggest which sleeve length I should go for. So you can make two sort of different versions of this. You can go for one loose boxy fit style and that has no darts in it. The other version, actually no, it has bust darts. Yeah, so I think both versions have bust darts in, but the more fitted version, which I think is the version that I would like to make, has double-ended darts at the front and the back. So they come down your body at the front and at the back to really bring the shape of the blouse in. And I really, really like that look. So rather than having that full blousy look over the top of your jeans, because I will be wearing it tucked into high-waisted jeans, this will be a more fitted silhouette and I really like that. So for the looser fit style, they recommend light to medium weight drapey fabrics like viscose, crepe or rayon. For the version with the darts, it also suggests that you could use something like a cotton lawn to just give it a bit more structure and you'll see that that's kind of the vibe that I've gone for. You're also going to need some buttons and I've purchased some lovely buttons. I've actually ordered them online. <laughs> and hopefully they're going to match up. I've kind of gone for the colours. I'll share those with you in a few minutes too. So just quickly in terms of sizing for the Lillian blouse then, it starts at a bust of 31 inches and a waist of 24 inches, that's for the size six. And then it goes to a bust of 57 inches and a waist of 50 inches, that's for the size 30. And then the fabric requirements are listed as well and they range from between two and two and a half meters of fabric for this blouse and I've got two meters which is going to be perfect. So I hope you like the pattern I've chosen, I'm really excited about making it. I'm veering towards either the three quarter sleeves or the long sleeves but I'm definitely going to go for the front and back darts to make it that narrow kind of fitted shape. So let's look at the fabric. I was really excited when this arrived. The choice on Gabrielle's website is incredible. So many beautiful fabrics to choose from, loads of stunning florals. And there were quite a few that I really fancied, but some of them had quite big, bold prints. And I thought for this blouse that a big, large scale print wasn't really going to work. I wanted something quite small and quite dainty. So I'll show you what I've got. The packaging by the way was incredible so obviously Gabriella sent this all the way from Australia didn't really take long to get here maybe two weeks I think it was packaged beautifully I've unwrapped it all obviously now but this is everything that I got so I got a lovely postcard with a nice note on the back from Gabrielle this was the ribbon that it was all tied up in I've got a lovely card of samples which I really enjoyed having a look through some beautiful textures and different types of fabric so that was really lovely to receive this was the envelope that the samples and the card came in and then this is my fabric and it's crinkling because there's tissue paper inside it's just wrapped so beautifully and this is what I've gone for. So as you can see, it's got that small scale, almost ditzy print that I was looking for. And I love that it's got all of these different colours in. So this is a 100% cotton voil meadowscape. It's called, so that's the name, meadowscape. It's 133 centimetres wide. It's around 85 grams per square metre. So quite a lightweight fabric. And the description on the website says, I adore this sea of flowers. This gorgeous foil is perfect for cool dresses and would be absolutely gorgeous in shirts. So there's my blouse shirt. It isn't see-through due to the dark colours. It comprises of three different blues. So you've got this navy background, which is one of them. And you've got these two different shades of blue here. I love blue, as you can see. And then you've got white, you've got forest green, coral and chartreuse. So it's a lovely fresh design, lovely fresh print. It gives loads of different pattern suggestions, which is really great on the Cloth Edit website. There's so many different pattern suggestions and it also has care instructions too, which is fantastic. So I'm just going to open this up to show you. So the price of this is nine pounds per half meter. source of the noise. So let's just have a look at this beautiful fabric. It feels so lovely and soft. 
It's a really stunning, stunning fabric. A little bit different for me, I think. But I think it's going to work beautifully as the Lillian. And I would wear this tucked in to a pair of high-waisted denim blue jeans. I tend to wear black jeans a lot, but actually I think this would need blue jeans with it, really. I'm so excited to use this fabric. So thank you so much, Gabrielle, for sending me that. I really appreciate it and I'm so excited to sew it up. I've got my Lillian pattern cut out. I just need to pre-wash this and then I can get cutting this out too. So I hope you're excited to see the finished blouse. Ah, oh, the finishing touch that I just wanted to share with you is the buttons. So I went on Pigeon Wishes shop on Etsy, which is my favourite place to buy buttons. And the ones that I chose were called the Kaleidoscope button set. And they're the 15 millimetre shirting size, which were £10 and they're just the most incredible kaleidoscope as the name suggests of colors and what i was looking for hopefully we'll put a picture of the buttons in but i was looking to pick out some of these colors and the kaleidoscope buttons really do i hope they do work when they arrive you'll see when i reveal my blouse <laughs> whether i use them or not but i'm really hoping they're going to look really lovely so what do you think? I really hope you like my choices and you're excited to see the reveal in a few weeks time. And what is really lovely is I have no idea what fabric Ruan and Rachel have got and what patterns they have got either. I have no clue. Rachel's the only one who's going to know, I think, ahead of time because she's going to be editing this all together. So thank you and over to Rachel now. Bye. Hi, I'm Rachel and I'm the third and last Northern Soul Sister and I've got the easy bit because I've already watched Ruan and Tamlin's chat to you all today so it makes my life easy because I don't need to go through all the details with you again. So this is very strange, I have to admit. It's really weird filming a Northern Soul Sisters vlog without my two lovely ladies here with me. It's really odd, but I will do my best for you anyway. So I am a big lover of blouses and I love Gabrielle and her store, The Cloth Edit. If you haven't checked her out already, I would really encourage you to do so because she has such impeccable taste and such amazing fabrics over there. Some bases which you will not have, have had the experience of before and yeah I'm really excited to support her and Ruan on this challenge for April. I'm a huge lover of a blouse and a shirt to be honest. I love dresses but I do find that I tend to veer towards separates most days because they just fit in with my lifestyle for work and um, more casually as well so and I love a good blouse because I think you know you can make it fit in with your wardrobe whether you're dressing casually or dressing up even with jeans and just want to elevate your look a little bit more so for me a blouse is an absolute staple in my wardrobe and I'm always looking out for something that's a little bit different with individual unique features and yeah I'm really excited about this challenge in April so for myself for my part in this challenge this month i am going to be sewing up the marie blouse by by hand london now i have loved this blouse for a long time actually since they released it but i didn't buy the pattern back then and it was only when i went to birmingham at the beginning of march with my northern soul sisters girls and we went to guthrie and garney and i saw it made up in one of their lovely fabrics and fell in love with it. So I've now bought the pattern and I'm really excited to make this blouse up and this challenge gives me the perfect push to do that. So let me tell you a little bit more about the blouse. So this blouse is a smock style shirt and it has pin tucks along the shoulder and the neckline and I am loving the pin tuck trend recently. We're seeing it on lots of different garments in the sewing community and I just think it's a really nice little feature. It has a loose fit and it has gorgeous bishop sleeves. I love a bishop sleeve and it's got two different collar options. So you can choose from a frilly sort of frill 
collar a bit like the one that I'm wearing now or just a normal classic collar. I'm not sure yet which I'm going to go for. I haven't actually decided but we'll, we'll see. We'll see how we get on. Now this shirt is sized in, has different cup sizes. It's sized from a B cup to a D cup and the B cup is a UK size 2 to 24 and the D cup goes from a size 16 to 38. And by Hand London do actually stress that the cup sizes for this pattern and for most dressmaking patterns are sized completely differently to what your cup size is in real life. So it's really important to measure yourself if you are making up a sewing pattern and not go by your ready to wear bra size. So I am going to make the shirt, obviously, because that's what this challenge is about. And I need about two meters of fabric to make this pattern up. Now, back in December, Gabrielle got in touch with me and she was really keen to gift me one of her silk linen fabrics from her shop and let me choose, which was just so generous of her. So I chose a particular print that I really loved and believe me it was so hard. The linen silk base is beautiful but along with the fabric that I chose Gabrielle also sent me two meters of another fabric, one of her Japanese cottons and these are stunning, absolutely stunning. So she chose a print for me, I didn't choose this print but she thought it would be a print that I would love and she is absolutely right. So let me show you the fabric that I am going to make my Marie blouse from and it's this one here. This is just the most delightful, gorgeous, springtime, beautiful fabric with this beautiful floral and leaf print which is obviously so up my street and this fabric as I say is a Japanese cotton. It's fairly lightweight so I would say it's just slightly lighter than a cotton lawn but not as light as a cotton voile or voile is it voile voile i'm not sure i know ruan's already said this hasn't she and i don't know either to be honest so any of you out there that know how to say voile voile i think it's voile I, i'm going with ruan on this and i think it's voile yeah let us know in the comments below but this the colors on this are stunning i mean look at the detail on that flower there it's absolutely beautiful a beautiful spring and summer print and this fabric, as I say, it is a Japanese cotton. And if you can see in the close up there, you can see it has like a raised texture to it. I think you can just see there. And it has that sort of jacquard feel to it all the way through, but it is still a very lightweight, beautiful, beautiful fabric. I think this is going to be gorgeous as the Marie shirt and I am so looking forward to making this up. So I have about two meters of this here and yeah it's absolutely absolutely stunning. I am loving Ruan and Tamlin's choices as well. I haven't seen those fabrics before they filmed their parts for this vlog for you today and they are absolutely gorgeous and I can't wait to see their blouses made up. So, yeah, I am really looking forward to working with this fabric. It is the first time that I will have worked with this particular fabric base. I would imagine, because it's a cotton base, that it's going to be fairly easy to work with. And I think because of the drapiness, but also it still has some structure, it's going to hold the shape of those balloon sleeves really well, but also show off the features of the pin tucks as well and I think it's just going to be absolutely gorgeous. So yeah I'm really excited to see how we all work with our beautiful fabrics from Gabrielle at the Cloth Edit. We will leave the links down below for you so you can go and check out our fabrics and patterns and let us know in the comments down below what you think to our pattern and fabric choices for this challenge. If you're taking part in this challenge as well and what you're planning to make we'd really love to know so that's it from Tamlin Ruan and I today but I hope you've enjoyed catching up with us and we will be back with you all really soon take care bye <laughs>